What is going on everybody? Welcome back to Red Seat Radio. My name is Corbin and we talk a lot on this channel about who the next Red Sox prospect is going to be to have an impact on this team in 2022. Well, it looks like we got our answer to that question because Alex Cora in an interview this week announced that he was planning on having a minor leaguer start one of the two games in the doubleheader against the Orioles coming up this weekend. So what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about who that player is, what you can kind of expect from his start, and we're going to talk about what kind of impact he ha is going to have on this 2022 club. We're also going to talk about what this move in general means for the 2022 Red Sox because it has implications outside of just bringing a guy up and sending a guy down. But before we get into that, do me a favor. Make sure you guys have hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. If you are new to this channel, we talk Red Sox content almost every single day. Also, make sure you guys are hitting the like button on these videos as well. If you haven't already, it is the best way to help this channel out and it would mean a lot to me. Thank you all very much for clicking on this one. Let's get into it. So who is the guy Alex Cora is talking about? Well, Alex Cora announced that he was planning on starting Josh Winkowski for one of the games in the doubleheader against the Orioles this upcoming week. Now, for those of you who don't know, Josh Winkowski is a right-handed pitcher for the Boston Red Sox, who is currently the 12th highest rated prospect in our farm system. He was drafted in 2016 by the Toronto Blue Jays, and he kind of bounced around a little bit between clubs before coming to Boston via a trade for Andrew Benintendi and the Royals. Josh Winkowski relies a lot on his fastball mix to get weak contact because despite the fact that he has a fastball that averages around 96 mile an hour, he doesn't get a ton of swings and misses and he's not a huge strikeout pitcher. But what he does do really well is he utilizes the four seam, the sinker and the cutter occasionally to induce weak contact. He also has a slider that does miss bats when he needs to. It has a lot of vertical movement so he can kind of do both a little bit, but he focuses more on the weak contact portion of things. He also has a changeup that it sits around 91 miles an hour and it's not exactly lighting the world on fire by any means. So that's kind of something he uses on a rare occasion, but it's always nice to have a changeup in your back pocket. And so far this pitch mix and this approach to at bats for Josh Winkowski has worked out really, really well. In Worcester this year, he has played in seven games where he has an ERA of 3.13, but more importantly, the opponent's batting average is 183 against him and he has a current whip of 0.87. Those are pretty crazy stats. But does that mean that Josh Winkowski is going to have a lasting impact on the Red Sox in 2022? Not necessarily. In all reality, Josh was called up because having two of our current starting pitchers go on Saturday moves everyone's rest day up one and it kind of throws off their routine a bit. And we kind of, I think we all know how important it is for major league pitchers to have a steady routine. It could also lead to injuries because of a lack of rest day and stuff like that. So in all reality, Josh Winkowski at this this moment is simply just a placeholder but just because he is a placeholder now does not mean that that there won't be lasting impacts on this Red Sox team going forward so what do I mean by lasting impact well the first and obvious answer to that question is Josh himself if Josh comes up and does really well he gives you five innings two hits something like that then you've got that sort of talent in your back pocket at the same time if he does really well it starts to burn a hole in your pocket a little bit wasting that talent in the minor leagues is going to end up hurting you in the long run. So do the Red Sox maybe start to see if they can find a spot for Josh on this team? It's a possibility, but, but the less talked about impact that this is going to have is on the team as a whole. And we talked about this a lot when we talked about Ryan Brazier getting demoted, but the bullpen, in my opinion, is on pretty thin ice. There's a lot of guys with options and movability in that bullpen that could be swapped out, changed, sent down, brought up, stuff like that. If Josh comes up and has that solid outing, that'll be the third time we've called someone up and they've done fairly well for the Red Sox. I'm talking about guys like John Schreiber who came, who came up because of an injury, because of COVID. And now he's our second or third most reliable reliever. Tyler Danish, who kind of did the same thing as Schreiber, has now found himself a decent spot in this bullpen. Are there guys in the minor leagues, AAA, double A who are fighting for a chance to come up here who could come up and replace some of these other guys. It's a possibility, 100%. Josh Winkowski coming up here not only creaks that door open a little bit more, but it also gives him the opportunity to do, to do that. Does it light a fire under Sawamora, under Davis, under all these guys who we could probably get a little bit more out of to perform better because they know that they have these options, 100%. But at the end of the day, it is just one start. It's one game. And it probably 
probably won't have a huge, huge impact on the Red Sox in 2022. What it will have an impact on mostly is 2023 and beyond, because now you know that Josh can perform at a major league level. Now you know that he is available and maybe he ends up on the back end of this rotation in a year or two or in the bullpen in a year or two. We never know what's going to happen with these. Let me know what your thoughts are down below on Josh Winkowski getting called up for a start against the Orioles. Do you like the prospect? Do you not like the prospect? Do you think he's going to be good, bad? How do you think this impacts the Red Sox in general? Do you think this has a bigger impact than just sending a guy up and bringing a guy down? Or do you think that I'm kind of crazy that this is just simply that? It's we need a placeholder. He's not going to do anything for this team besides eat innings. And that's that. Let me know all your thoughts down below. As always, if you've made it to the end of this video, do me a favor, make sure you guys have hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Like I said, we talk Red Sox content almost every single day. Also make sure you guys are hitting the like button on these videos as well. It is the best way to help this channel out and it would mean a lot to me. Thank you all very much for clicking on this one and I will see you in the next one.